Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to the <laughs> what is this? Chess Classics you must know episode 5. It's 8 a.m. in the morning. 8 8:05 and we are having this morning session after such a long time. So in a way it's like a secret session. No one knows about it. It's only you guys who are here. Uh and I thought it's good time to resume the morning sessions, you know. Um uh, not keep it long keep it short ones and uh, why not yeah so a warm welcome to everyone in the chat who are here uh, it's going to be great fun we are going to learn a new classic today and as you know it's the game between rosenthal and stenitz your aim is to stay focused here answer 10 questions that will be posed to you and together we will learn something very very interesting it's one of my favorite games so good morning to everyone oh nice 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 so many people joining in you know i'm not expecting too many people today it's going to be just uh, a beginning and i think i wish to do this every morning make it like half an hour to 45 minute session you know that's that's the best so that you have your chess workout each morning and okay so today's stream is about the classic between stenitz and rosenthal now rosenthal uh, was white he was a good player back in the late 1800s and his opponent was stenitz who became the first world champion in chess but at that point he wasn't a world champion yet so we're going to learn uh about this game it's one of my favorite games of chess and it shows couple of things but i don't want to reveal it right now we will discuss about it as the session goes on yeah so let's begin shall we and you have to be ready yeah with your answers so there'll be 10 questions posed to you but i also have i think four additional questions without points there are 10 questions with points okay so stenitz with uh, rosenthal with white opened the game with 1 e4 and stenitz who was black played the move e5 the knight jumped out to c3 well usually you play on knight to f3 but rosenthal decided to play knight to c3 now black played his knight to c6 okay knight to f3 and here stenitz played a slightly uh, how can i say it not the main line okay not the main move in this position he played a slightly different move here the main move would have been if you developed your other knight to f6 uh by the way i should i should start the timer yes yes i should start the timer so here knight to f6 would be one of the main moves but what uh, stenitz did was he played the move g6 now here's a question for you without any points what should you do here with white you know black has just played the move g6 how should you react and i want all of you to participate to write down your answer so that we can um, you know learn together and if you have any questions please let me know fantastic vinayak marar himank singla suryansh verma nice nice that is the right move here well yes bishop c4 is also a good move in this position but the best move is d4 and it's for this reason that g6 is not particularly the best idea now he took and here uh, rosenthal took with the knight which is the best move but if you are following my opening trap series which i you know publish a trap every day then you would know that knight to d5 is is a very very interesting move here uh and the point is that after bishop g7 
bishop g5 what is the move that black should play here you see the queen is attacked how should you defend this position black to play Ah, Suryan says, Jamil said that when black plays g6, go for d4. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. By the way, very important move here is knight c e7. First of all, you never really want to play a move like f6 because f6 kind of blocks your bishop. And after I go back and attack this pawn on c7, you have to defend it. And after knight takes d4, you see that this bishop is so badly placed because of its own pawn. So what you really want to do is either play your knight to f6. But once your knight comes to f6, this is kind of a brutal pin here. You know, it's and it uh, loses after e5. So this position. But the right move is knight c e7. And I'll get to it in a bit as to why this is the best move. The question is, after knight e7, what should white do here? Yes, Karyakin also falls into the same trap. Yes. White to play. What would you play here as white? <laughs> T kids, you have the idea which is right, but don't sacrifice your queen so soon. Uh, knight f6 is possible. It's not a bad move if you give a check. But then after king f8, you are in some trouble. It doesn't serve the purpose. Here, as Subrata Roy says, good move Subrata. Uh, Indrajit forever as well. Knight takes d4 is the correct move. And the point is if you take with the knight, bishop takes e7 and the queen is trapped. And if you take with the bishop, now I want, now I would like to know what is the move that you would like to come up with. Come on, guys, think, think carefully. There's one good move, one amazing move. I want you to find the amazing move. Still no points yet. Oh, nice, nice, guys. Very good. Indrajit Forever, Suprata Roy, Skan Datta, Suryan Sharma, Nagaram, KM, Atharva Shah, Vidhan. Excellent, excellent. Too good. The right move here is Queen takes d4. Unbelievable move. And the point is not that after Knight takes d4, you want to win this Knight here, right? Take this. Because this is like you are just going to lose a piece without any reason. Yeah, you are a piece down. But what you want to do is knight f6 check, king f8, and what's the checkmate here? What is the way to checkmate the black king? Let's see. All those who are in the chat, I want you to take part. Okay, I know you must be a bit sleepy right now, but well, wake up, get going. Maybe you can wash your face and join in. Yes, fantastic guys. Beautiful, beautiful. All of you on the ball right now. I know that there is uh, no need to enable uh, slow mode yet. I'm going to do that so that someone cannot write the answer over and over again. You know, the same answer. Bishop h6 is a beautiful checkmate with the king checkmated and these two squares covered by the knight. So, therefore, you remember I was asking you which knight to play to e7 and the right move is knight c e7 and the point is after knight takes d4 I can actually force you with the move c6 and your knight either has to take when after knight e7 I have a good position with black or you have to go back when after let's say uh, h6 followed by knight f6 I would once again have a fine position. So this was a small distraction from our main game. Uh, I showed you this trap with knight d5, but Rosenthal actually played the better move in this position, which was knight takes d4. 
Now I played the move. Uh, <laughs> Stenitz played the move bishop g7, bishop e3, and here the move that Black played was knight g7. Well, knight f6 is is interesting, but a move that was really uh, getting me slightly worried is knight takes c6, b takes c6, and e5 here, attacking the knight. And the knight doesn't have the g4 square because the queen will take it. If it goes to h5, then all of you know what to do here. Whenever you have a pawn on e5 and the knight is going to h5, how do you win this position? White to play. Yes, Chala, Akhil, T Kids, Vinayak Marar, Jinan Jomon, Skanda Datta, Jairam Salwankar, Indrajit Forever. Fantastic. The right move here is g4, and the knight gets trapped. Okay, because it has nowhere to go. So, therefore, the another move could be knight d5, but then you lose a free pawn, you know, cd, queen d5 and also attacks the rook. So you may have to go back to g8, but then it's not a happy sight yeah, to go back. So therefore, what Stenit said is, I'm going to develop my knight to e7. I don't want to put it on f6. Rosenthal says, okay, you are passive. I have more space. I have developed all my pieces well. Let me develop my bishop as well. So he goes bishop to c4. And now white's position looks very nice. Black played the move d6. And here's another question for you. Still, we are not reached the points, guys, because the points will come soon. The points will come soon. And then once they come, you have to be ready. But right now, it's black to play, uh, white to play. What would you do in this position? Let's try to understand. Let's try to think as white, although Stenitz is black and we are looking at this game from black's point of view. It doesn't hurt to look at some good moves for white. Himang Sangla says castles. Okay, not a bad move. Ved Jadav says queen d2. Km says bg5. Km bg5 would be bad because d4 would hang. Castles is good, yeah. A3, Atharvasha says to avoid knight A5. Uh, possible, it's not a bad idea, Atharva, but if it is not required, do not make pawn moves in the opening. Because right now, knight A5 this sort of takes the knight away from the center and you can always move your bishop back if required. So, the best move in this position, and this is very important for you to learn, and all those who mentioned castles, I would say this is not a bad move. This was also played by Rosenthal. So give yourself a pat on the back because Rosenthal played it. But the better move is queen to d2. And you may ask me why. Just look at this. If black castles, what should white play now? Very important. White to play, what would you play in this position? Thadani Mitesh says, my middle game is weak. How do I improve it? Mitesh, by focusing on this session right now as we speak. If you focus here and you learn from this, it's the best way you can improve. And answer the questions that are being asked. Everyone says, Bishop h6, not a bad move at all. It's possible. But then maybe Bishop takes d4. And then when you take on f8, I, takes, I take queen takes f8. So this is just, or I can even take here, queen takes and I take on d4 and it's a free piece. So let's not get into that too soon. But the better move here is long castle. And you might ask me, hey, but how do I know when should I castle short and when should I castle long? Can anyone in the crowd, in the chat, here right now tell me why long castle is a better move than short castle let's see who can type 
quickly. Why is long castles better move than short castle in this position? Brings rook to open file, not bad, not bad. But I'm looking at something very specific. Better development in space, so go for attack. Okay. I want that word. Who can say that word? One word. Let me see. Open file for the rook. Yeah, that's that's what everyone is saying. Yes, Hema Lata. Hema Lata. Ax I, I think she's got the first first person who got that is hook g6 pawn is a hook what is a hook hook is something that you can latch on to so therefore how do you latch on to the hook you will go h4 with the idea of h5 and whenever there's a hook you are bound to get an open file whereas for white uh, for black all of white spawns are on the last rank and therefore in order to create some kind of an opening it's much more difficult you push your pawn somehow it's first of all not easy to push but even if you push it's not easy to open lines because there's no hook imagine if a white pawn was on a3 you could have played b5 b4 and opened up the position like a hook okay at some point but here g6 is a pawn that is advanced and you can open it up okay fantastic so that's why this was a very good way in which Rosenthal could have played. He could have played queen d2 and long castles here. Okay, he did not do that. He went short castle. He said, Are castle kar lete. what's the big deal? Yeah, we can castle. So black Stenitz says, I'll also castle. And now Stenitz played the, uh, Rosenthal played the move f4, f4. He said, anyway, I'm going to gain space here. So now, question for you, still not for points. What is the best move for black in this position? Uh, Peter Cavano, queen f3 is a square where you don't want to put your queen. First of all, queen f3 loses the knight on d4 in that position. So that is the reason why queen on d2 is much better. This is very important here, what you should play. All those who are saying f5, black to play. f5 cannot be played because of the pin here. So, king h8 and f5 uh, am I slightly slow, slightly slow. Fly, try to play a little faster here. Knight a5 says Sneharsh. Snehersh, that's what uh, Stenitz played. Naveen JJ, fantastic. Naveen JJ, you are right. This is a very, very important move here that you have to find. Remember, whenever your opponent tries to play a move on the flank. Now, F4 is not really a flank move g4 or h4 would be more like a flank move but still f4 is kind of a little bit aggressive move what you should do is you should strike in the center okay and whenever you strike in the center the move that should come to your mind is d5 very good move the point being let's try to calculate now you would say look white has one two three attacks on this how is this pawn even you know how can you make this move it's just a free pawn the point is after knight takes d5 okay you play knight takes d5 and he has to take with the pawn yeah because if he takes here with the bishop then after knight takes d4 bishop takes d4 queen takes d uh, bishop takes d4 queen takes d4 black wins how does black win Black to play and win here. Very nice move. Making use of the sort of a pin in this position. How does black win here? 
वेरी गुड इंद्रजीत फॉर एवर शुभंकर सरकार हेमालता सिद्धांत गौतम सी सिक्स इज द राइट मूव एंड द बिशप के नॉट मूव सो दिस इज अ फ्री पॉ फ्री पीस हियर फॉर यू ओके सो दिस डजेंट वर्क द अदर पॉइंट इज दैट इफ यू टेक here pawn takes then i can go knight to a5 or even if you say play knight takes d5 knight takes d5 pawn takes now then i go knight a5 the bishop is hanging it will either go to b3 or go back in either case if it goes to b3 i will chop it off pawn takes suppose if you take with the knight by the way then i can take the pawn on b2 which is a free pawn and if you take with a b3 i play queen takes d5 and again it's equal sort of i win back the pawn and i have two bishops this is a dream position yeah for black this is what black wants to do if you go back to e2 once again i can take the pawn and i am much better here it's around equal you don't say much better but much better than what the position was so the d5 break is actually very important okay he didn't play d5 as yeah? stenit said i go knight a5 what i want is i want this bishop so here it was very important for rosenthal to play the move bishop to e2 okay it was very important the reason being that black's idea here is to play the move d5 as we already know because now there is no bishop here so you can play d5 and we know that after e takes d5 black will take back with the knight with a nice position so here is your task now still not for points what is the best move for white white to move best move for white in this position let's see all of you are saying e5 skanda datta priyansh joshi indrajit forever amay kanetkar but e5 is a mistake e5 is a big mistake why is it a mistake ved jadav well done ved jadav pant moradia pushkar kulkarni vikash chala akhil ansh bhargav mohit gupta well done guys well done all of you have got it right e5 is a mistake because of c5 this is a big problem in the position okay and you're going to lose a piece now after the move d4 you move the knight let's say you move the knight to b3 i take pawn takes and i play d4 and it forks two pieces at the same time do you see this so that is the reason why you cannot play this way uday veer sharma says good morning sagar bhai your constant sessions motivated me to read and learn more and i made it to 2078 in 4 months thank you <claps> amazing uday veer i'm so glad and please make sure that once the online uh, once the offline tournaments begin please go there and get your rating that would be nice so therefore the best move in this position is f5 all those who found this move very well done very well done because now f5 the threat is f6 and it's a brutal threat you'd never want to play f6 because then your bishop on g7 looks so bad and that is the reason why here f5 is a very very powerful move now in the game but Rosenthal played his bishop to d3 now is your first question here for points first question for points what should black play here black to play black to play now try to think we have learned so much about whenever opponent tries to play sort of on the flank with such a move what do you do yes all those who point system basically is to keep yourself at the end 
you should write in the comments to me how many points you scored yeah that's the idea and it's to keep you alert if you don't want to keep a track of points that's completely fine but i would love that you do so all those who said the mood d5 well done guys well done excellent work those who said c5 which is also an interesting move it doesn't it doesn't really uh, work right now because after knight f3 white is doing well i mean it's not a bad move knight f uh, c5 but knight f3 just allows you allows white to regroup and get his position in order like if you go c4 i'll move my knight back this remains weak this square is weak all of it doesn't look great so therefore when the time is right you strike in the center with the move d5 one point to everyone who found the move d5 well done guys by the way uday veer sharma says do we have to enroll and start again from 1200 in offline tournaments uday veer uh, rating starts from 1000 so you will have to enroll in tournaments whenever they begin the information will be on chessbase india don't worry until now no on offline tournaments have started in india when they will rating events you will let you know you have to enroll for it go and play there for a few days beat some rated opponents and you get your rating now very good question by soham agarwal who says okay why is f5 not a good move now you see in this position when we spoke about bishop e2 d5 we said f5 is a powerful move so what is the difference here when he plays bishop d3 and d5 why is f5 not a good move now henok segae also asked the same question why not f5 you tell me yes vinayak marar very good vinayak marar is absolutely right because the difference with the bishop on e2 and d3 is very clear the difference is that when i also timappa bhat well done if you take d takes e4 <coughs> it attacks the bishop on d3 and that is a big big advantage here in this position over bishop e2 now f6 doesn't get the desired result because after bishop f6 rook f6 e takes d3 you win back a piece okay very well done guys very well done uday veer says can we beat gm abish and get directly rated <laughs> well to play against abish is not easy ah huh? okay so he took here on d5 and now stenitz took back knight takes and queen takes and i would like you to look at this position very very closely and try to understand why what i'm going to say uh, makes sense okay first of all white's position is nice because it's he's well developed everything is castled maybe he'll get his queen out rook but there's one problem in his position it's like you know there's this person who who just has everything perfect but one teeth sticking out like this okay one teeth sticking out one tooth sticking out and what is that tooth in white's position which is sticking out and it doesn't look good it's like when you see it you feel like ah absolutely samarth luthra i just like the way you say it peter kawano you are right vinayak marar fantastic soham agarwal well done the f pawn it's like oh why is it there it weakens the e4 square why not keep it back on f f2 you know so that's why this pawn on f4 is what gives black a very good position okay so white went for the move c3 not a bad move just saving his center 
you go rook to d8 and now the queen comes to c2 very smart by the way rook d8 had a devious trap that is to attack the bishop here by kicking the knight away okay but rosenthal played queen c2 now think very carefully this is your second point in the game today what should black play and think carefully whether c5 is winning a piece or not if not c5 what would you play here so black to play black to play what would you play here why can't black take the knight with his bishop underworld thug this bishop is very powerful you see it controls the long diagonal we don't really want to give it up for the knight just as yet that bishop needs to be kept on the board Shardul Barge, Ayush Bhati, well done guys, well done. <sighs> Nightbot is saying badia move. Nightbot has become like an Indian, yeah? <laughs> so here, the right move, as all of you said, knight to c4, well done. All those who said knight to c4 gets a full point in this position not c5 why is c5 not a good move please let me know and all of you who are watching this try to take part in this you know the best way to learn chess is by engaging by writing your answers by asking questions i'll try to do, don't write saying give a shout out to me how are you doing how can i improve and all of this all of this can wait what you should be doing right now focusing on this position and why is c5 not a good move? Yes, goblet fire, you are absolutely right. Indrajit forever, well done. Well done. Suryan Shwarma, Vinayak Agarwal, Vivek Raj, excellent. The right move is bishop to e4. You see the knight, if it moves, the d3 bishop will hang for free. Yes, but he plays an intermediate move, attacking the queen. And once the queen moves away, let's say queen to d6, I can go back knight f3 and everything is safe for black. Yeah, everything is safe. The main point being that f5 does not really win a piece because of the intermediate move rook a d1 attacking the queen and then the bishop can jump, jog back, maybe go to even d5 in this position. Okay. Knight to c4 was played. And here, Rose, how many of you, okay, here's a question for all of you. How many of you want to play bishop f2? Please say I. Okay, just write I in the chat. And the next question is, I'm going to ask in a bit. So at that point, how many of you want to play bishop f2? Write I in the chat. Uh, Aradhya Gupta, rook e8 was a not bad move. But once you committed your rook to d8, why do you want to move it again? You have a knight on the side of the board. Let's bring it back. Not bad. So many people want to play bishop f2. Now, I want to ask you, how many of you, okay, want to play bishop takes c4? Write me. M-E-Me. -me. Bishop takes c4. How many of you want to Take that right, me. Suryan Shwarma, tempo is one move. The plural of tempo is tempi. So many people want to take the knight. I know, you know, when you are beginning out chess, when you are not very strong, you feel like knights are very, very tricky. Let's kill them. But guys, this game is going to change the way you think. Okay. Rohit Athalia, good morning, Sagar. Guru Dakshina, great to see you live in the morning after a long time. Thank you, Rohit. By the way, Rohit, I want to tell you, I tried to search your message on Instagram by putting your name and everything. I couldn't find it. So it's good that I could finally tell you. If you are, uh, if you had sent me a message, do send it again. I'll check it out today. I couldn't find it. So, 
the right move here is bishop takes f2 all those who wrote i well done guys well done excellent job no points for that but good understanding of chess you will get points when you play the tournament bishop takes c4 is what rosenthal played so you can be happy because he was a good player but the point is after queen takes c4 what has happened in the position can anyone tell me what is the biggest advantage for black in this position something that you can see here what is a big advantage for black here gaurang chaturvedi says why not play knight c6 well gaurang you could play knight c6 here it's a possible move but the thing is that after knight c6 i believe that he can just take the knight and then after you maybe take back i don't know pawn takes or queen takes he will save his bishop and it's an equal position so therefore he went knight to c4 okay let's see at some answers after knight at d4 is hanging amok sahore no it's well defended amok by the pawn and the bishop okay i agree in a way there is a pin here so so good point good point but all those who wrote bishop pair there are many so i do not know whose name to take but all those who said bishop pair well done guys fantastic fantastic job bishop pair and you will see that bishop pair is a big advantage in a position and we will learn it in this game now firstly rosenthal played here queen to f2 okay and now it's your move in this position what should black play black to move and this is the i think the third yes third point in this position and try to now think very very carefully it's an open position you have the bishop pair how should you continue nihilesh good move nihilesh panos have ghost well done suryan sharma fantastic asit tuwa kamle ramandeep singh indrajit forever sneharsh whitey preet mahatre dhairya pokarna ashutosh damle well done guys all those of you who wrote this move here going to tell you a very important concept i want to ask in the chat okay how many of you want to play bishop takes d4 very very powerful move very strong move how many of you want to do this indra places why bishop f5 wrong indra plays the knight will take no bishop f5 if you play bishop f5 here the knight will take it how many of you want to play bishop takes d4 that was the question no 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 everyone says no i so love it i so love that the chat is so so intelligent and understands chess so well the point is when you have the bishop pair you really don't want to give up your bishop for so cheaply yeah you want to keep it at the right moment you will get an option to take it so let's not do it right now yeah the best move here and remember there are two concepts to learn here in this game first of all power of two bishops but the second concept is whenever your opponent has a knight all that is looking for is a stable square in the center okay a stable square from where it cannot be kicked away okay imagine okay if there is a dog okay and a dog is looking for a nice place for a night sleep what will it look for a nice roof somewhere some some place where no one can disturb it but if it sleeps on the road right on the main road what will happen to it it will get kicked people will come and say hey move away don't be here you know the same thing happens to a knight here it gets kicked c5 remember this when i was a young kid i remembered this very well the knight is getting kicked here okay and the pawn black is saying to the knight this is not an outpost for you this is not a stable square for you i'm going to kick you out from here okay 
So Rosenthal says, fine, if you're going to kick me out, I'm moving away. Black to play, fourth point. What are you going to do now? You have kicked him out from there. What do you do next? Play coolly, play calmly. There's no need to hurry. Uh, Dasharati, Darhasan, Yandam, that is also possible what you say. But I like C5 better because it kicks the knight away. Yes, well done guys. Goblet fire, Skandadatta, Atharva Shah. Excellent. All those who say B6 here, well done. <clears throat> Bishop f5, those who mentioned, did you see your pawn is hanging here? Why do you want to give it and make things complicated? Let's go bishop, let's go b6, protect the pawn, keep it very solid. You know, this structure is very solid here with these three pawns. Okay, knight to e5. Now, this is not for points. You have four points done. How many of you want to take this knight? How many of you want to take the knight on e5? Granite bishop, Ashutosh Damale. Yeah, this is kind of a granite against this bishop, yeah? This bishop is hitting on granite. So many people now saying me, 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 me. No, no, not so many. Only no, I can see no, 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 no. Very nice. Very nice. I don't want to give up my bishop here. Because once again, if I give it up, I lose the double bishop advantage. At the same time, I give him an open file to work with. Maybe the position is around equal, but I don't want to give it up for now. Okay. So let's keep as it is. Queen is hanging. Bachalete. Come back. Let's come back. Calmly, coolly, let's come back. No tension, no stress. He went queen to f3. Now, how do you save your rook at the same time create a threat to your opponent? Black to play, not for points, but still, what is a good move here? Let's save, let's save our rook. Make sure whenever pieces are hanging in the position, you take care of it. Look at this, the queen is attacking. But if you can save it with a tempo, that would be very nice. Very good. Very good. All those who are saying Bishop A6. Well done. Well done. This is the right move in the position. Bishop moves off. Attacks the Rook. And also saves your Rook. This is exactly what you want in chess. You not only want to save your stuff. You also want to attack opponent stuff. So he played rook f e1. Okay, saving his rook. But also creating a latent threat against the queen. Someday these two knights will go away. This will create some issues. So black to move now. What do you do here? Black to play. Remember. Remember the dog who, who sits on the main road. What happens to it? Black to play. Black to play here. For the fifth point, what do you do here? Goblet fire, well done. Dasarati, well done. Samarth Chitanya. Sneharsh Whitey, Mr. Toran Singh, Akhil Challa, Himanshu Sharma, Vinayak Marar, Hema Lata. Fantastic guys. Suryan Shwarma, Samarth Lutra, Usha Kumar, Tina Popli, SVCB. Excellent job, guys. Excellent. The, the point is. When your opponent, imagine that the pawn was on f5, the knight will be like, whoo, thank you. It's a nice square. I can relax. Take it easy. Take it easy. The best move here, because the pawn is on f7, is to kick the knight away. Don't be greedy and pick up a pawn. If you are greedy and you're going to take this pawn, at the end you sold yourself too cheaply. Why? Because after bishop h6, what is the big problem that black faces here? Can you tell me what is the big problem? The position is not losing.
but black face is a big problem hiten sm asks a good question also parth arora i will tell you i'll tell you more in detail about it yes suryan sharma magnetic move hema lata says weak dark squares you see these squares are so weak just as an example if i play queen c7 how do you checkmate your opponent now how do you checkmate your opponent dark squares are very weak just to give you an example of how this weaknesses can really cause you trouble <laughs> even vd will not take this pawn yeah although he's greedy vd yeah queen to f6 absolutely there's a checkmate here and the game is over khatam finish game ends and that is why you see don't be greedy for material instead kick the knight away and a very very interesting question asked by many people is hey doesn't this block my bishop here on g7 it looks so bad but it's not permanent guys it's not permanent at the right moment i will open up f5 and then my bishop will be really cool but i'll wait for that moment now the knight has only one square to go it goes to g4 your move again for the sixth point here what should black play by the way you know guys i wanted to finish this session in 45 minutes so i put the timer for 45 minutes it seems like i'm not going to complete it so i'm going to add 15 minutes at the end of it to make it a one hour session so i hope you don't mind okay very good guys indrajit forever shiv shankar i have a problem with your move shiv shankar omegas nihilesh goblet fire prizank also i have a problem snehlatta i have a problem vinayak agarwal guys guys i don't want i have a problem with many people's move here and you know what snehersh yt says h5 or f5 he says look i'll push i'll take both the pawns in my hand during a chess game and i'll put both on the board and i'll i'll decide which one to do that's not how chess works guys you can't say or you can say in your mind okay both are good moves but i need to choose one so choose one of the two moves don't say that i'm going to play f5 or h5 choose one which move here f5 or h5 let's try this f5 all those who say f5 write i in the chat i okay all those who say f5 write i let's try to see how many people so many eyes ooh i i i i i nice nice many many people want to play f5 interesting interesting now all those who want to play h5 write me all those who want to play h5 please write me ah time is up okay i'm going to add 15 minutes on the clock shouldn't have been so ambitious yeah i thought i'll be like super quick me 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 oh nice so many people say me fantastic so what i do realize is that there are more people who want to play h5 than f5 and one move is right one move is wrong f5 is not the correct move because of a very specific reason because the dog who was getting kicked on the main road by the you know being there right there suddenly says oh this is a cool square now no one's going to kick me and remember a knight can be kicked only by the pawn that is the problem and you already know that we are okay to give up a pawn here it's completely fine in fact here it's even worse because now the pawn is on f5 white can play a winning move here can you find the winning move it's not even greedy vd this is horrible it's a horrible move white to play and win what is the winning move yes and exactly well done guys bishop g5 
and you lose your queen is attacked the rook is attacked mm. you're gonna lose the game i don't want this i don't want this so therefore not f5 don't let the knight come kick it away kick it back h5 fantastic move a good question to ask here is what happens if i take bishop take c5 attacking the queen the queen is hanging have you seen it black to play what should black play here of course it's a horrible move it's a horrible move but you know some people now that we have 1000 people now suddenly it's not no longer a secret session i started off with like 50 60 70 100 people are like okay today secret session so now that there are thousand people many of them are still sleeping they are in their bed like this holding their mobile phone watching this so I'm like come on wake up what's the move here yes exactly queen takes g4 it's a free knight so you you can't give that up okay so rosenthal says okay i'm going to save my knight i'm going to save it away and now then it says Look, you want to create some mischief here, yeah, on the e5. I'm not going to fall for your mischief. I'm just going to play queen to f7. By the way, another move that I would have also liked very much is queen to d5. Exchange the queens. I'm very happy if the queens are exchanged. Okay, queen f7 was what Stenitz played. And Rosenthal said, I'm going to play f5. Now, all the people who said, these pawn moves are aren't they weakening you know all the pawns should be here near the king but now they are advanced aren't they weak i would like to tell you one thing if your opponent cannot attack it or attack your king it's okay and sometimes here with the bishop pair and white pieces being passive this is not such a big weakness and you have to individually look at every game to decide whether you should push your pawns or not okay so f5 was played and now for the seventh point in this game what should you play here black to play hello hello welcome keith keith i saw the night bot writing badia move i don't know what you've taught him man this is this is brilliant so many people here want to play the right move it seems like all of you are as good as stenitz the first world champion isn't that cool isn't that cool by the way bishop b7 all those who say has a small problem chota problem what's the small problem as Nightbot would say, not a badia move. This is a bad move. You see, this small lapse in concentration is what I want you to avoid. It's a bad move. Exactly. F takes g6, intermediate move. The queen is being attacked. True. But isn't your own queen also getting attacked? And now all of a sudden you lost a pawn. You don't really want to get that. It's called, what is this called? When you attack something and your opponent attacks back something, what is it called? It's a term in chess. It's a cool term. When you know such cool terms, you, know, you, you can show off. You can go to your friends and say, hey, do you know this move? What's it called? Yes. Intermezzo, fantastic. Intermezzo. I N T E R M E Z Z O, intermezzo. Or also, you know, if you want to be uncool, you can say intermediate move. Why not be cool, you know? Intermezzo. So now you meet your friends, you're like, do you know what intermezzo is? And they're like, oh no, he knows chess, yeah, he knows. Or you can say, do you know this game, Rosenthal versus Tenets, two bishops kicking away the knight? Fantastic game. You're like, oh. He knows his classics. Okay, g5 was played. Good move. Rook a d1 was played here. And now the move that you suggested, bishop to b7. 
the bishop is very happy to be on this long diagonal. Queen to g3 was played. And I like the next move by, by Stenitz. It's not for points. I still want you to think, what would you play here? This is a position where there are many options. But let's see. What should black play? Black to play here. What should black play in this position? Nightbot says, Dosto, don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, nice. Thank you, Nightbot. I love, I love this. Like the stream, guys. Like the stream so that more people can join. Now, many of you, many here want to. There are two types of people here. One type wants to take this, uh, push this pawn on h4. But you know, when the pawn is pushed to h4, it's not a bad move, but it gives the square to the knight at some point. So I'll be careful right now. Maybe if it's not required, I won't push it just as yet. The other move, which many of you want to do is pick up this pawn. You guys have such a Hawkeye. Yeah? You want to take that pawn on the corner of the board. Not a bad move. Not a bad move. If it's a free pawn, why not? Also, the fact being that after rook d8, rook d8, queen c7, it looks like it attacks the queen and also the bishop. The problem is that one move saves everything. What's that move? Also threatens a mate in one. Black to play. Yes, Anand Joshi, your move is right. We'll come to it. But right now, what is the best move for black in this position? It's a winning move. Yes, fantastic guys. Queen to d5. That is the best move. Now queen d5 defends the bishop, defends the rook and also makes a very small trap. Checkmate in one. So therefore picking up this pawn was not a bad idea. But you know Stenitz is afraid whenever you kind of overextend and this is an analogy used in boxing a lot. And I want you to remember this. Whenever you punch, okay, whenever you punch your opponent, what happens is your body weight goes forward. And whenever your body weight goes forward, you are going in one direction. It means that if the opponent dodges that box, you're already out of balance. And if he strikes back to you, you will fall. So this is always the case in chess as well. When you go and pick up that pawn on a2 and you say to yourself, hey, I picked up a pawn. It's like you're going in one direction. How can white take advantage of this fact? You know, this is always this is always something you should be very, very careful about. When you go and pick up a pawn on the side of the board, how can white harm you? How can white harm you here? What's a good move in this position? <laughs> Pratamesh OP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Pratamesh is karate, yeah. My father-in-law, he is a boxer. Yes, h4. Bishop g5, not a bad idea. You should calculate it. Bishop g5 is not a bad idea. But after, let's say, rook d1. Rook d1. F takes g5. Queen takes g5. Now you are threatening f6 here because the bishop is pinned. But I'll come back, queen f7, and I just don't think that there is enough compensation for a piece. You did not get enough. So, the better move here is not to sacrifice a piece yet, but to play h4. I like this move. Now you are hitting this pawns, and if black goes g4, then you go queen to c7 without exchanging on d8. You go queen c7 so that d5 is not possible. <clears throat> You're attacking this rook as well as this piece. And the position doesn't look great. You know, you could have even gone queen c7 directly here. But the problem with it is that after takes, takes and bishop d5, which is the defense, the inclusion of h4 and g4 is in white's favor. So always you have to look at these little subtleties in any case. Okay. <clears throat> so 
Stenitz actually was very, very smart. You know, he never used to go and pick up such pawns on the side of the board. He always used to be like, I have an advantage here. I have the bishop pair. True, my this bishop is not so good now, but it can always come out from here later if required. So I'm going to play in the center and he played the move rook to d5. Well done, all of those who found this move, rook d5. Good move, it was not for points. He took, queen takes d5. And now you see that the f5 pawn is hanging and really there's no way to save it. So he played his rook to d1. Now he took the pawn and in came the queen to c7. Now question number eight, eighth point for you. How should black continue here? How should black continue in this position? Eighth point for you, what is the move for black? Well, rook d7 was possible here, Peter Cavanaugh. If you play rook d7, the problem is that I can just take the rook. So not possible. Queen c7. <laughs> rook d7 was possible, but not possible. It was possible, but it was a bad move. Okay. Guys, not queen d5, free queen. Yes, goblet fire, well done. Good move, goblet fire. Suryan Shwarma, bit passive, bit passive. Sir, Mr. Mukhodo, Mukhodo, Mukhopadhyay. Good move. Who else? Rishi 2003, well done. Shiv Shankar, well done. Tina Popli, excellent. Mr. Omar, well done. Nice. All those who said the move, bishop to d5, fantastic job guys, blocking the d file, stopping the rook from coming here and also saving your bishop. It's a very good move, it's a powerful move. The bishop is pretty safe there. Queen c8, all those who said queen c8, not a bad move, slightly passive. I just feel, you know, why not do this, okay? B3 was played. Suddenly Rosenthal said, Ek pawn to mar gaya. One pawn is gone. Why should I give another pawn? So now, ninth point, guys. Ninth point for you. What should black play here? Be very careful. <clears throat> Swastik Kumar, if you played rook c8 in the last position, wouldn't your bishop hang on b7? It's not a good move. Now, black to play. What should you do? Very important. Very important. I am going to give you a beautiful analogy for this. <laughs> Which will help you today. Morning. Or night. For all those in the US. Or early morning for all those who are in the your European countries. Fantastic. Who have given the right answer? So many people have given the right answer. Ah. Let me read some names so that I know who are they. Uh, 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 um, Harsh Gautam. Well done, Harsh. Um, yeah, not many. Yeah? A lot of people have just given some weird moves. Weird. Oh, time is up. Sorry, guys. Is it okay if I continue? Please let me know. Uh, I know I should have finished it by now, but... well. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm giving this analogies and all, it takes a lot of time. Sneharsh, well done. Okay. Okay, the analogy goes like this, okay. So right now, if you go to your refrigerator and you open it up and you see all different types of things in there, yeah. You see vegetables there. If you write, like eating eggs, it's there. There's milk. There's also something. There is. Uh, but usually what happens is there's something which is in the side of the refrigerator which lies there for days and days together. And either it rots or you go right now and you remove it and you say, oh, today Karela, bitter guard. I'm going to make Karela ka sabji. Okay. 
same way the rook on a8 is this this vegetable in the refrigerator which is going bad you need to get it into the game and that is <laughs> that is why you play rook to e8 i know many of you said rook to c8 but guys attacking the queen why do you want to attack the queen because the queen will move away and it may even take a pawn if why not go and attack the bishop right there and the rook is so nice in the center so please right now guys after the session ends go to the refrigerator and check out what's going waste yeah <laughs> but not now food poisoning op <laughs> okay so c4 was played now how many of you here want to take this bishop on e3 and how many of you want to save this bishop on d5 it's a very interesting question once again should you take on e3 or should you save the bishop on d5 what should you play save 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 people are saying save okay or should you take take all those who think take right take those who think save right save take 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 save 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 take save take save very good very good save it don't give past pawn interesting interesting save save i can say a very simple analogy here let's say that you have a youtube channel which has 500000 subscribers okay and there's another youtube channel which has 50 subscribers okay do you think the person who has 500000 subscribers will go to the person who has 50 subscribers and say let's do something where you know both of us get equal like something that is equal no right well something similar here what will happen is that right now black has an advantage and here if he takes here and he takes here then the biggest advantage of this exchange goes to white so what you do is you save your bishop here okay bishop f7 is a better move because now you saved your bishop you are attacking the bishop on e3 okay this is much more important here to save your own bishop than to take and give him a passed pawn is a very nice point which you all said okay bishop f7 bishop c1 and now the last point guys last point of the day i want to see how many of you get it black to play a uh, d from california not a bad suggestion d says why not take take and take here good move i like it it's not bad but you know what stenitz used to do is he used to say why not just play positionally why to give her opponent any chances and also now is the moment after bishop c1 where you need to make the final final move final move for yourself that gives you a great position all those who said rook e2 well done guys excellent a rook first of all on the side of the board loves to reach open files okay so if you think a, a, a rook is say a student then after school it wants to go to the university so the open file you can already say is like a university and when on the open file it always wants to reach the seventh heaven this is known as the seventh heaven or you can see say the phd or the masters degree the main thing is that a rook on the open file does really well on the seventh rank because all the major goods lie on the seventh rank so rook jumps into e2 and all those who got this well done guys well done excellent job because now you are not only pawn up you are also having complete control over the position queen to c2 and imagine here 
if it is black smooth it is white smooth now but if it was black smooth what is your threat here if it was black smooth here what is the threat in this position what is the big big threat in this position eighth c k rashmik vasishta says i'm watching the stream in the time of my online class rashmik i'm going to figure out which school you go to and i'm going to find eighth c division i'm going to tell them that you are watching this <laughs> yes very good rook takes f2 rook takes f2 and queen takes c1 is a big threat so therefore white goes back queen to g3 defends the knight and stenit says a pawn maringe so you know you take the pawn when opponent has no counter play so what happens is if you have only tied their legs then their hands are still free and they can do something but when you tie their hands and then the legs and then you pick up the pawn they can't do anything here it's more like even you know white has absolutely no compensation there's no way in which white can do anything so queen b8 check king h7 queen g3 look now how he improves his position bishop g6 again very very smart very quietly h4 you know what stenitz will do now everyone knows stenitz what will stenitz do here he will keep control how do how will he keep control How will he keep control? Yes, Adexus. Good move. Let me see how many of you. Vinayak Marar. Yes, fantastic. So many guys, man. Magnetic move. Rajiv Ranjan, Chiranjeev Singh, Mona, Monga, Tushar, Tushar, Yogesh, Mandar. Pianolytic, fantastic guys! So many people have got it. Basically, you have understood the essence of how Stenitz played this game. Keep control, keep control. Knight to d3, and the final move here. Uh, two more moves, but well, free pawn. Let's pick it up. Free hai to acha rahega. Queen c7, and now the last move of the game. What did? Stenitz player, just just a joke. But anyway, let's let's make the best move for Black. What should Black play? Yes, Suryansh Bishop D three is good. Also possible is Queen takes D three. Fantastic. Queen takes D three was played, and you know what Rosenthal did here? He said, "I resign the game." and it was game over it was a brilliant game i want all of you to write down in the chat how many points you scored if not at least write down what did you learn from this game it's very important what did you learn from this game all the people who joined in a bit late please check this out again it's one of the games which i love tremendously it's there in my memory always it's it's a fantastic game All I can say is it's a fantastic game. Six, five, seven, three—not bad. Nine out of ten, Suryansh. Well done. Seven for Yash. Okay, what did you learn from this? Keep control to kick the knight. Patience and cool mind. Not to take corner pawns. Very good. Positional chess. don't mindlessly exchange pieces importance of bishop pair yash manyar sam mai to abhi abhi aaya hu yeah well yash watch it later don't give counter play to open the fridge and check for stale stuff devdeep singh has learned the biggest thing the real life lesson from here that the fridge has to be opened and checked for the stale stuff positional strategy kick the knight i think one thing if you can remember here is that when the knight doesn't have a stable square opponent's knight kick it kick it and push it back 
And the second thing which you have to remember is the power of bishops. Even though this, this bishop remained close, at some point it was exerting a lot of pressure in the position. It can always open up. And this is where all the points which you mentioned were very, very appropriate. Bishop pair, keep control, kick the knight away, don't take corner pawns, don't give opponent counterplay, intermezzos, very interesting. Very interesting and thank you all for being a part of this wonderful session. I hope to do this more often in the mornings. Would you like these morning sessions for me? Morning is always the best time. And, I, and it doesn't really matter to me if there are, let's say, 10,000 people watching or 5,000 or 1,000 or even 200 for that matter. What matters for me is that you guys take active part and you write, like when I say, when I ask a question, whether you want to play this or that, you actually say the move. Not that you write some stuff like, hey, let's go to picnic and this and Sagar Shah, Kadar Khan or whatever. You, you don't write all these stuff. What you do is you actually try to write these things. Delhi mein thandi hoti hai subha subha. What's the greatest motivation to continue chess, sir? Well, you enjoy it. That's the... This makes US, hoppy, um, US happy, yeah. Morning, I love morning. Okay. Unch stream says, going to sleep now. 4 a.m. here. Ooh, sleep, sleep, sleep. Well, I would love to do it at 8. The main reason being that I can start my other work then by 9, 9.15. And, you know, this makes a lot of sense to me. And, well, you can always listen to it later. But all those who take part would be very nice. Anyway, tomorrow I'll try to join in. I don't know if I can do it every day. There's also a big tournament coming up from 6th to 10th. I hope you guys join in. We'll also be launching memberships. I just want to share this idea with you, maybe uh, first time on stream, that we want to make sure that all of the money that we collect through memberships goes to Indian chess in some way or the other. Uh, by doing events for Indian chess players, for for helping them. So that is the, the plan and that's why we want to launch memberships in the tournament itself. So that is the plan. Keith says, I love these timings. Please do more at this time, Sagar Bhai. Okay, well, Keith, done. Uh, Gurkirat says, when is Dr. Chess coming back? I think either this week or the next, but it'll start once again very regularly okay Jainil Parmar says don't launch membership I can't buy it well Jainil I don't want to uh, make any of the content premium here the the main aim of launching memberships will be to help Indian chess players so that's that's the thing so you as a dedicated viewer of the channel will not miss out on anything. Uh, the aim is to just help more chess players. That's that's the main thing. Kambi Abara says youth tournament is a brilliant plan. Yes, that is going to be a fantastic event with Nihal Prag, Raunak, Gukesh, Aryan, Chopra, Abhimanyu, Puranik. Woo, it's, I'm going to do a separate stream on that. And we're going to learn about all these players. But until then, guys, thank you all for joining in. And please do watch these series of classics. I believe that learning from the classics can help you become a stronger player. Because when you know these tricks, then you learn the openings and the end games and all of it. It all comes together. You know, I always believe chess improvement is like that puzzle which you are building. Which is not like you start from the center. And you put all the blocks like connected to each other. What you do is you first start from this end. Then you start from that end. You start from this, this, this everywhere. And then all of these things connect at some point and make you a better chess player. That's how I would say chess improvement in general works. And this is how I want you guys to improve. Uh, not like, oh, today for one year I will work on openings, then one year I will work on endgames. That's not how it works. Yeah, As a whole, you have to 
work on different phases and then all of it should come together so until then guys take care and see you soon today i'll do one more stream i think one or maybe two but i'll see you later in the day take care bye